Welcome back. It is an adrenaline filled time to be in the biomedical sector, biotech in, in particular. New discoveries and therapies and crucial advances toward curing disease will have a major impact in the new year for patients and investors alike. Joining me right now to talk more about it here in San Francisco at the 36th annual JP Morgan Healthcare Conference is Third Rock Ventures partner. Abby Selnicker. Abby, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Maria. Very nice to be here. You have an interesting model because you acquire stakes in companies, but then you actually help run them. We do. We actually have something that we call Discover, Launch, Build. We incubate the companies within Third Rock. We launch them. We go in and operate in those companies for a period of time and then hire the best talent to run them in a durable manner. Tell me what you're seeing in terms of advances. We were having a discussion at the top of the show about what's going on in cancer, for example. And I know we've come a long way in certain kinds of cancers, but others are just have, have we've been unable to really have breakthroughs. What are you seeing in terms of advances right now in medicine? I think we're seeing a better understanding of the genetic basis of all different cancers and that's giving us the ability to pick the right approach and not just take one drug and say should this work in this cancer but really know that a given drug is going to work better in one type of cancer than another. So we're seeing a lot more of what I would say is a personalized approach towards cancer. And, and away from oncology, advances there, what's most exciting to you right now? There's a lot that's really exciting. I think we're seeing things in uh, cardiovascular disease. We're seeing things in um, depression. One of our companies has had major breakthroughs in postpartum depression. Sage is the name of the company, um, as well as severe depression. These are things that we hadn't seen in a long time, and they're really changing the lives of patients. Some of these biotech companies obviously have a very short burn rate. I mean, they're burning through money very quickly. Yes. That's got to be tough as an investor to find those situations where there actually is a growth story. I think that um, as scientists, which is really what differentiates Third Rock as a firm, we go in understanding the science behind what we're trying to do. It mitigates some of the risk of the investment uh, because we really think through the companies before we form them. And then, yes, there is this burn rate, but by the time we're investing in companies, we have a better idea of what the outcome is going to be. We are also very committed to partnerships um, with other biotech and pharmaceutical companies, and that helps mitigate some of the risk of that burn. So we're seeing a lot of value created in a relatively short period of time with the companies that we create. I want to go back to some of your ideas and sort of where you're invested, like cardiovascular. But first, let me ask you about the FDA. We've got a new FDA commissioner. Yes. How has that changed the game for a long time? We were talking about the FDA getting in the way of progress, taking too long to uh, approve drugs. Has that changed significantly? I think that we're seeing that change. It's a little early to tell for sure, but Dr. Gottlieb has made incredible um, movement in helping become a closer collaborator with the companies. You don't feel that you're, um, it's an obstruction. You really feel like it's a partnership with the FDA, and I think we're seeing that in the number of approvals that we've seen this year. And we may not see the same number next year, but that doesn't mean that we aren't really having a fantastic interaction with the FDA sort of paving the course for more products to be coming out more quickly. He's getting good marks, isn't he, Dr. Gottlieb? I think he is. I think he understands what we do in the industry. He understands what the consumers need and, and what his job is, but he's also not um, being risk averse. He's sharing the risk with the companies, which I think is what patients want. Advocates for patients will tell you we really want these drugs for, for the people who have unmet needs. That's terrific. So we talked oncology. You're also invested in cardiovascular. Tell me what you're seeing there. So I think what's interesting is taking a little bit of what we've learned in oncology about the genetic basis of disease and applying it to these uh, more um, primary care type of, uh, of, of diseases. So we have a company called Myocardia, which is focused on the genetic basis of one form of heart failure. So again, you're getting into a very personalized approach towards treating cardiovascular disease, which is, I think, really exciting. And um, as we were talking before, mapping the genome, mapping what we call the proteome, understanding um, all of the sort of biology and how it comes together is really helping us make a much more deliberate approach towards how we treat these diseases. Yeah, the mapping of the genome was really so fascinating and when we first learned what was happening with this 20, now more than 20 yeah. years ago, uh, it was very expensive. We didn't really understand how it happened. Today, uh, an individual can get their genome map for a, a very affordable price. Is, isn't that right? It's absolutely true. And I think that you can do um, specific sequencing of, of genes that you know you're looking for, or you could really do a comprehensive mapping for a 
pretty reasonable price. But, but I feel like, you know, because of the mapping of the genome, we, we better understand what causes disease. I mean, we know about smoking. We've stopped smoking. We've lessened smoking. We know that poor eating leads to heart disease, and that's the biggest killer. We've changed our diets. We haven't learned enough about the brain. Well, Autism, think, Alzheimer's, where are we on that? Front? I do think we're learning more about that. I think through um, understanding of the genome and understanding actually things like um, immunology, autoimmune diseases, we think of those as arthritis and other things. We're actually finding out that some brain diseases are very inflammatory. Um, that's changing the way that we think about treating some of these diseases. Even diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's could be treated very differently. And I think that's where gene therapy has come in too. The, when you understand what gene has been dysregulated, you have the opportunity to fix that with gene therapy, which really you couldn't do a few years ago. Well, this is really just a tremendous change, actually, what you're talking about in, in terms of gene therapy as it relates to the brain. Real quick, this tax plan is going to mean more profits for uh, companies, uh, large and small. They're going to see their tax uh, rate go from 40% to, to 21%. Uh, do you think with that savings, we're going to see acquisitions. Are you expecting any of your companies to get acquired now that Big Pharma may be on the lookout even more uh, for, for biotech deals? Yeah, I think that we know that pharma needs the innovation that comes from biotech, and we know they need to fill their pipelines. Uh, so we do know that there's going to be interest in, in M&A, and I think um, some of our companies are, are great targets, and uh, I think it's going to be an exciting year. It, it, it sound, certainly sounds like it. Abby, great to talk with you. Nice to talk to you, too. Thanks, Thanks so much, much for Mary. joining us this morning. Abby Selnicker joining us there.